Natural beauty in the Pangani Basin, from the open plains and snow-capped Kilimanjaro to the foothill forests, inspire visitors from all over the world. But for locals, this is home, a home that needs to provide both food and money. Its beauty and resources have made this a viable place to live, but in recent years a growing population and an ever-increasing demand for water compounded by climate change have put in doubt the sustainability of livelihoods in the region. Droughts, heavy winds, deforestation and floods threaten local residents and accentuate conflicts over scarce water. Pastoralists such as the Maasai traditionally migrate according to weather patterns. In some years, they can't find the water they need to sustain themselves and their cattle. There is growing competition over water between different users, such as farmers, large-scale flower and vegetable growers, as well as pastoralists, which means the resources need to be shared more equitably. IUCN and partners, such as the Pangani River Basin Management Project and the Global Water Initiative, are helping negotiations and working on solutions in this region. One of the initiatives that we do is to establish the water user associations so that people can uh, sit together and manage the little water that we have. Other water saving and water sharing solutions proposed include boreholes, cattle troughs and drip irrigation. The Pangani Basin Water Office with its partners, IUCN and uh, other development partners are working with this community to see how they can address their the problems they have, first of all, they have decided, the community with their partners, that they, are going, they have drilled a borehole to supplement water. But uh, another thing which is on coming, which is going to be done by the Meru District Council, to be on tree planting. And uh, also they are planning on how they can improve on land management. Solutions have also come from local residents themselves. By setting up associations, pastoralists and settled farmers are finding ways to share land and water resources in a more sustainable manner. Of course, such efforts need to be coordinated throughout the basin and at the political level. What the government is trying to formalize are water user associations. So water user associations are, consist of different users, so livestock users, agriculture, domestic use and so on, and they come together to form a water user association. So the project is supporting the government to set up these water user associations, which has actually been a demand from the communities. IUCN and partners have carried out an environmental flows assessment. Um, and environmental flows essentially are when you make sure that there's enough water allocated to all sectors, including the environment. Many coping strategies to adapt to a changing climate exist in the Pangani Basin, and they are being implemented by IUCN, the Pangani Basin Water Board, partners and communities. One way that uh, IUCN and partners are contributing to combating climate change impacts is through uh, assessing the vulnerability of communities and um, working with communities to determine how, what actions they can take to reduce their vulnerability. Finding adaptation options and determining how to allocate water has helped guide the Pangani Basin Water Board towards better water management. This supports nature as well as people and their livelihoods. So working with the community and identifying these hazards went down to, to looking at the impacts and how to help the community adapt to these climate change impacts. Through open dialogue, improved collaboration and coping strategies, a sustainable water future is once again possible for the Pangani Basin and its communities. As we know, rivers are for our life, for our livelihood, so let us come together and save our rivers. Mm -hmm.